Well, one of the things I think that's, uh, for me, very, um, very concrete that's come out of it is um, to find a way of actually um, being clearer about and mapping uh, gender equality outcomes, whether it's in the context of organizations or in the context of um, uh, community changes in communities where organizations function, um, and being able to develop a, a simple sort of self-generated um, tool which can help people, uh, which can help organizations sort of map themselves and then look at the relationship between changes in organizations and changes in, in their programs and the work they're doing at the community level. And then to sort of track that over a period of time and then also to, um, to be able to use that as a discussion point with other organizations who are trying to do similar things. So you sort of look at you know, where we've invested our resources in, a, in an organization um, and what kinds of outcomes has that achieved or helped us achieve? And, um, and, and how is that changing over a period of time? What have we left out? Where should we be focusing our attention? So I think that's an idea that has been playing around in my head for a while. Um, it's something that, you know, using the gender at work framework, um, which looks both at organizations and at changes we're trying to achieve in, in uh, communities, it it's, means a, uh, developing that a bit further. And um, the exciting part is also um, to see, look at possibilities of collaborating with some others who are at this meeting. So I think that was very interesting. And the other thing I think that was, um, for me, really uh, exciting was to, to meet um, people whom I wouldn't otherwise have an opportunity to meet, to meet. I mean, I've been working on these issues for many years, but um, to meet um, the young woman from China and, uh, and some of the um, African participants who are sort of, they're, um, they're newer to this field, you know, um, compared to Caroline Moser and myself who've been in this field for many years. But to see um, how, they, how they understand um, this work, what they do, um, and then to, to really, uh, it's striking that um, gender mainstreaming in their, their conception is, is really a combination of strategies. Yeah. It's, um, it's, you know, uh, it's activist uh, organizing, it's advocacy, it's information and knowledge building, um, and it's also organizational change and looking at issues of gender parity. Um, and uh, in, in some other conceptions, and I think some of the conceptions that you find um, which have generated from northern development organizations or bilaterals particularly, it, take, it, has, a, it has a very particular meaning. And, um, and the, the, the lack of success in terms of seeing resources going to women or development outcomes um, for women coming out of that positively has not, um, you know, is the, not been a very good link there. So um, it's been a bit frustrating, but when you, you start looking at all of these other things that people do, um, and the fact that gender mainstreaming, although you know one may want to change the language, is uh, it's sort of language that's stuck with, mm -hmm. in a way, kind of stuck with. You know, it's it's out there. It's been used for many, um, for now a couple of decades, but uh, it does really mean, um, in in very concrete uh, situations, it means a mix and multiple uh, strategies to actually achieve women's rights and gender equality. So I think that was also a very interesting part of the meeting.